Back to Hear Me Out. I'm E. I'm D. And Potomac is back. And we're so excited. Robin and Candace aren't here, which is already a plus for us. So today we're going to cover season nine, episode one of Potomac. And it was a doozy. Yeah. So um, we have an article from Vulture, which if you guys have seen our previous Potomac recaps, you know, this is our favorite article to read. Um, and it looks like it's by the same author, Shamira Ibrahim. And um, the headline is The Real Housewives of Potomac Season Premiere Recap Drive Me Crazy. When we last left off with the ladies of Potomac, I openly lamented my beloved franchise being trapped in an Ouroboros of conflict and misery, unable to escape the lingering shadow of season five's fight between Candace and Monique. For three seasons, the cast had been uh, siloed into intractable camps with few exceptions, namely Karen and Mia's penchant for seeking chaos at all costs. It was troubling to ca- to watch my favorite Marilyn Bluesies flail in an endless loop of irreconcilable conflict. The tension among the ensemble was not only frustrating to watch, but also visibly miserable for the cast. Something desperately needed to change and fast to get the group back on track and dazzling our cameras with nonsense. Well, in the words of the great philosopher and preacher, Gloria Hallelujah Woods, every day the sun won't shine, but that's why I love tomorrows. (laughs) Quote from here, but amen. Um, It's been (laughs) about six months since the cherry blossom has last graced our screens, and in that time, much has changed. The Dixons have parted ways with the camera. Thank God. That's my that's my opinion. And an exit that will hopefully allow their marriage to fight another day. Um, away from the constant scrutiny of the Bravo fan base, Candace is building a family of her own and chose to pursue that journey in an environment where she was not constantly triggered into a shrieking emotional mess at each conflict. NECA was unfortunately relegated to a one season phenomenon. I forgot about NECA. I totally forgot about NECA. Um, taking her shrine and witchcraft allegations out the door with her. We have officially entered soft reboot territory, akin to Real Housewives of New York season five and Real Housewives of C. What is C? OC. Orange oh, County. Real Housewives of OC. Okay. Orange County season 16. And God willing, the shakeable injected much needed breath of fresh air into the flailing franchise. We Guys, are now. Ne- before you continue, if you want us to watch. The other housewives, please let us know in the comments. I've been trying to convince D, and she's just not budging. But maybe you guys can convince her. Good luck with that. We are now down to three original cast members from Potomac's debut season. Giselle, Karen, and Ashley. That's insane. All of whom have had significant transformations between seasons. Giselle is entering season nine, not only having lost her partner in crime and fellow green-eyed bandit Robin Dixon, but also freshly grieving the recent passing of her father, and both incidents have her in a more conciliatory and open space than ever before. Less focused on creating the mess than participating with her castmates. Ashley is still not divorced yet, but is now openly dating, even participating in a Bravo dating show alongside Giselle, Luann de Lesseps, and Shannon Beador. No, no clue what that's about. And speaking of Shannon Beador or Beador, the Grand Dom herself made the headlines with a DUI of her own shortly after the season wrapped, leading yet another season where Miss, Mrs. Huger will be doing her best to avoid any significant inquiries into her personal life with one-liners, deflections, and grandiose hijinks. The season picks up in the aftermath of Karen's DUI and car crash. After a bizarre reenactment of the collision by the editing team, the episode transitions into a silent title screen, which initially had me anxiously assuming that we were in a very special (laughs) episode. My fears were thankfully quickly assuaged when fast forward to a month later and Giselle is picking up Karen to debrief her about where her life is. The duo sport matching denim sets as they head to Karen's favorite strip mall brunch locale, Tally Ho's. Which she frequents so often that they have a breakfast special named after her. 
Uh, on the ride over, we get a few details. In confessionals, <laughs> the wives read off a litany of felonies and citations Karen was charged with, ranging from suspended license, presumably from her first DUI, to reckless driving, speeding. In grand dame fashion, we get few details. Her ribs and ankle were injured and the car was totaled, but it's not long before she immediately launches into her tried and true routine of evasiveness. Mm -hmm. Giselle humors Karen as she launches into oft-repeated rationalizations that always stop short of accepting culpability for her actions. She had been struggling with grieving her parents, her marriage is in a rough place, and legally she cannot say much until the process is adjudicated. I am certainly not here to invalidate how long the grieving process takes. I am intimately aware of how close personal losses stick with you for the rest of your life. The longtime viewers are well aware that the Grand Dame has been invoking the same talking points since season three whenever she is in a hot seat. Six years later, the context lacks the potency it once had to inoculate her from critique, particularly since after hitting her trusty marks in her speech, she declines to confirm whether she was drinking that night at all. Giselle is handling the scene with an atypical level of nuance, pushing Karen at certain points while letting her fall on her own sword at others. Two seasons ago, Giselle would have pushed Karen into admitting that she was drunk with a problem, as Cherise did with the group last season. Currently, however, she is navigating the issue well, allowing Karen's contradictions and inconsistencies to linger in the air. Do any of us believe that Karen has never had a glass of Prosecco at... <laughs> Or three at Watering Hole just down the road from her Potomac house? Of course not. But it's amusing to watch her convince the waiter to insist that she wasn't on, or that she hasn't on camera. Eventually, Giselle brings up the first planned all-cast event of the season, a Hattitude birthday lunch for Karen, featuring Giselle donning a caravan of frightfully tacky hats for all of the women in the group. <laughs> Before we transition into the chaos of that, however, uh, we will be moving on to Mia, but before we start discussing Mia, let's take a quick break here to discuss the Grand Dame and these very first few scenes of the new season. What did we think? First of all, I don't know how Bravo has gotten so comical during the Housewives. I think, they, didn't they have like a Batman thing one time? Like the old school Batman? Da, 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 da. You remember that yeah, one? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they had, like, I forgot what it's called. You know the, the paintings with the dots and stuff? Yes. They had one of those things. So the reenactment, I was laughing, not laughing. Because I'm like, Bravo, we know what that was about. You didn't need to reenact that. Mm -hmm. But in all seriousness, I don't know if I forgot or I didn't know that Karen had another DUI. So I'm kind of surprised. I feel like that's not really in her character. Like she seems, you know, kind of like a serious lady despite her shenanigans at, in Potomac. Um, so I'm kind of disappointed that, you know, she would endanger others and herself. This, this could have been a very, very tragic situation. But in true grand dame fashion she's evading you know answering things and giselle you can read and i'm like can you just tell us what we want to know we saw a whole reenactment you might as well just tell us the backstory so i think we're just gonna have a whole season of her just dodging this whole situation yeah we saw that later in the episode clearly because she <laughs> like so okay i think we've said over the last several seasons that we've covered karen is one of our favorites she's hilarious she is who she is you know what you're getting but you also know that she never gives you anything you think you're getting something but you never really get anything you know yeah. it's like she has a way of getting away with the bare minimum. And and that was something that we used to complain about with Giselle, right? Mm -hmm. Because at least with Karen, there was some, you know, multitudes there, whatever. But I feel like this episode made it very obvious that she's not really giving us anything aside from obviously a headline. And because I think that she, maybe because she's the oldest, there's a little bit of reverence that they give her. But overall, I mean, she just told Giselle She's having marriage problems. There was no discussion about that. Mm -hmm. We had whole seasons about 
the issues between Ashley Darby and Michael Darby. The fact they've never been divorced still. Well, I don't know if it's happened by now. But anyway, at that point of the first episodes, they still hadn't been divorced. There is the marital issues between Mia and Gordon that were still going on. We've seen all of these different things. Karen is supposed to be the, what did she call it? The establishment or, or whatever mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. And yet you don't want to talk about, like, we can't get mad at Giselle for not talking about the health issues that she had, but not get mad at Karen for not talking about her marital issues. Yeah. I'm not going to touch on the grieving thing because that's personal to whomever. But when she said that about the marriage issues, I was like, what? Why Why are we not discussing this? And yes, I think we saw a glimpse of the new Giselle. The fact, and just like the article pointed out, that Giselle did not push her. Giselle did not say anything overly shady. We know she's shady in general, but she wasn't like overly shady. So I think that whole interaction to me was was strange overall. Mm-hmm. And then also, was Karen trying to endear herself by going to like a, a hole in the wall type diner that supposedly now she's frequented so many times? For sure. Like a lot of that, it felt like there was a lot of staging besides the reenactment at the beginning. Yeah. And well, Giselle and, called it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She did. But I think, but I think it's, again, it was just a very illuminating, you know, situation of like, she does not talk about the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. Because if she were to say, yeah, you know what? I made a mistake. I shouldn't have gotten behind the wheel while drinking. I'm having these issues. These are my issues. It would have been different. But you come to this place pretending like you're a regular and they've named a meal after you or whatever which mm-hmm. sounded like a very basic everyday meal um it didn't really seem like oh you know this is the karen huger special what was it eggs bacon and cheese like very very probably special <laughs> yeah I don't... anyway so so I, I did feel a little frustrated because i was like my initial thoughts were like, especially when Giselle started to say about like the um the birthday thing and who she invited. That was the first moment where I'm like, she didn't mention Robin, and it was like, oh yeah, I forgot Robin is not in this thing. I didn't even think about Candace. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think about Candace. I didn't think about Neca, at all. So, anyway, it was disappointing. That that initial part was disappointing in that. Karen that Karen now reflects what it is we were complaining about with Giselle. But I'm even though I'm happy to see Giselle in this new space, she does seem lighter and mm-hmm. happier and, and I like that. At the same time, I can't help but think that she doesn't have any allies. Her green eye bandit is gone. She needs <coughs> needs someone. So it's either Ashley. going to be Ashley. Yeah. Karen. So that's why I think she did impress her so hard, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah. Because she is known as the Shady Queen. Well, and we'll probably touch on that here in a little bit, but you know, our 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 main gripes in the last couple seasons is the fact that like there's no real character growth or any mm-hmm. anything real substantial about Giselle that we have come away with in the last few seasons, right? It's yeah. always the same thing. Um, bare minimum and all that so as we're going to talk about later one of the very shocking things that I found was oh Robin's not there so now she wants to be good with Wendy and it was like okay you know so anyway we'll get we'll get to that in a little bit but but that was something that just like was an overall thing noticing this interaction between the two um, original cast members, because obviously Ashley wasn't in that scene, but like, you know, anyway, so mm-hmm. moving on. So <sighs> Mia and Gordon, whose lives are somehow even more dumbfounding than when we left them after an off season of the formerly married couple duking it out in the press with competitive interviews, revealing shocking allegations about each other 
Mia and Gordon are now formally separated, with Gordon living in his own apartment in the same building as Mia and the kids. They are still dealing with the fallout of bringing their drama on camera, and as a result of their public bickering and the actions of Mia's new partner, Inc., the paternity of their son, Jeremiah, is a lingering question that is yet to be resolved among many others. I am not going to linger more than necessary on discussions around Jeremiah's paternity, simply because I find uh, discussing children in this matter unseemly and morally dubious, a point that seems to elude Mia when confronted with it at Karen's birthday brunch later. Outside of that distressing conversation, there is still plenty of material to pour over. One being that Mia has effectively moved Ink into her life full time and spent the bulk of the summer traveling with him, and Ink is so involved in their lives that he has folded Gordon's laundry for him. A discovery that made me drop my glass in shock. As a fellow 510 Amazon, it is hysterical the lengths Mia takes to ensure her short king shines in their Instagram photo ops. She's always standing in front <laughs> to force perspective and sometimes goes as far as a dramatic candid of her hunched over laughing to minimize the height differential. As Karen quipped, we all know that Ink needs an apple box to stand eye to eye with Mia. Let your petite prince live. <laughs> okay, before we move forward, what did we think about Mia and Gordon in this new season so far? It just makes me sad how this is all has all transpired. I didn't I couldn't have imagined that it was just gonna turn so sour. We knew or we can assume that Mia, you know, she wanted him for the money. <laughs> At the same time, they were married for what, about a decade or so? Yeah. Well, that's a long time, you know, to, to be with someone and have kids with but just the way last season ended with the whole, is that my child, is that not? And, you know, the kids saw Mia with Mr. Ink in the bed. It, I think that's what I keep thinking of. And the fact that we're still discussing the paternity is kind of gross to me. Like, <laughs> why, why are you doing that to this kid? This is not something, this is something that I think and everybody should. I think would agree this should be off balance. This should not be on the show. The kid is what, like 10 years old? Yeah, 10 or 11. This is, it's weird to me. It's its kind of cringy. Like, I don't even want to hear about it. Yeah, I mean, it. I feel like it sucks because we saw that, what, the very last episode, the last 30 minutes of last season and it spilled over into the reunion. And, you know, that became like a whole thing. And honestly, I had hoped that from there it would it would be done. Mm -hmm. Um and I I I feel that I was pretty like I don't know if to say like disgusted, but it was uncomfortable that they were still talking about it. I yeah. agree with the author of this article. Like when it comes to children, that should really just be off limits. Um, and you know, like what you were saying as well, it just, it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense, especially knowing that this child, 10 or 11, has access to social media, I'm sure, um, can see TV just like the rest of us and can easily be told by someone at school or wherever, like, oh, your dad's not your dad. You know, like those are things that I feel like in general, it's not something a kid has to go through. The kid did not sign a contract to appear on the show. The kid did not sign a contract for their lives to be like put out there. Um, so like I I can appreciate that for Gordon, that's his son. Like he doesn't care to like, you know, even debate that. But I wish he would tell her to stop talking about it. Like mm -hmm. because he it, whether paternity or not, that is who's been his father. So he has a say. And so I would have preferred him saying like, hey, we'll talk about this another time or, you know, something along those lines. Like, yeah, and I, 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 it also makes it even more cringy how Mia just seems so aloof about it. Like, like, it doesn't seem like a bothersome thing to her. And I know that we've talked about how nothing really hits Mia. Things just slide off her back. And that's fine in most cases. But this is about your son and someone questioning his paternity, not just someone. 
but the man that you've now brought into their lives, the man that you've chosen to literally have around them all the time. There's one point I think where Gordon is upset because this guy is taking the scent to get a haircut. And like, I can understand why that would bother him. You know, it mm-hmm. just, it seems like a very like natural thing that it, the dad would want to do it or whatever. So I don't know. It just, I don't, I don't really think that Mia is understanding like the gravity of it and the ways in which it can negatively affect her son. Um, so yeah, like that whole thing just like, it feels really uncomfortable. And I, I think it's also strange they're living in the same apartment complex. I get that he wants to be close, but he still seems like he wants to be with her, to be honest. I don't think he's like fully let her go. You know what bothers me? I think it's the the fact, and I think Gordon has to be blamed as well. To me, it seems like a quick buck is more important than the kid. Because yeah. even though Gordon's like, stop, that's still my son, they're still talking about it. It's mm-hmm. like, just shut it down, either party, and then we can move on and besides they keep dragging this paternity for so long how long does a paternity test take maury did it in like what three minutes when he well, was they haven't done it. huh they haven't done it exactly so they they want to prolong this situation this problem mm. for tv when we had a whole talk show that did it in like three minutes so <laughs> They yeah. want to get this result. They want this uh, confusion and whatever it is for the cameras. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's more so her. And and I hate to say that, but that's what it looks like. Yeah. You know, um, because you don't need to take Gordon's DNA. If, if the guy, if this other guy is claiming paternity, then you just need his DNA and your son's DNA. Like, I, I don't know. It... Overall, it's just really uncomfortable, and it doesn't look like they're gonna stop talking about it yeah. um into the season, which like just overall it sucks like anyway, mm-hmm. let's continue so despite Giselle's horrific taste in hats, she inexplicably picked an array of bowler hats, boaters, and even a top hat for the affair, in addition to taco and banana hats to serve as befuddling hats of punishment. The event kicks off seamlessly with the entire cast as well as newcomers Stacy and Vivienne making it to the festivities. Giselle made a point to invite Wendy, the first olive branch extended between the duo since the former professor dressed her down at the reasonably shady event in season six. The moments of shade are present but mainly lighthearted. Giselle names a non-alcoholic drink on the custom menu, the Grand Dame, and actually brings a bounce bag DUI basket Filled with hilarious accoutrements like a Stanley Cup, Uber cards, and a birdhouse kit. A jester that is equally petty and comical as is Ashley's forte. Before long, the group begins to whisper more explicitly about the elephant in the room. Karen has largely been taciturn about her upcoming court dates and general circumstance. But Mia kicks the door open by mentioning that Karen seemingly drunk out Jacqueline recently prompting a series of nervous murmurs around the table. Wendy is immediately turned off by the tenor of the conversation, stating, I want no parts. While Mia certainly seems to have a score to settle with Karen after their friendship fell apart last season, this is not a productive way to take a jab in. A DUI, while dangerous and shameful, does not all of a sudden mean that the perpetrator makes a vow of sobriety to atone. They simply need to stop driving. Karen is no stranger to a planned interrogation from the cast, however, and enters the lion's den prepared, suddenly transitioning into talking like a mob boss. Be mindful of how you go so low, she warns, with just the teeniest undercurrent of malice. What I want to know is, who is my real friend? (laughs) The The women look on in stunned silence. I want to see who are the real soldiers for Karen Huger. Because I certainly don't want any fake B-words around me. It's a confrontation straight out of a mafia movie and she delivers it with such earnestness that you would think she was under investigation for a Rico, not totaling her own car. (laughs) Unfortunately for Mia, her attempt at keeping Karen in the hot seat ends up being deflected right back onto her. 
In short order, the statuesque beauty is peppered with questions from the cast on the status of her romantic and family life. In a misguided attempt to take the pressure off from Mia, Jacqueline refers to the previous marriage to Gordon as a business partnership, a statement that raises more questions than answers. Are we acknowledging that Gordon was a sugar daddy and the funds ran out? Last season, Mia made a point of stating that she had her own money. This is a notable change of tune. In any case, Karen sees the opportunity to strike back and does so without hesitation, criticizing Mia for letting her kids get involved in the pandemonium of her personal life. It is a fair critique. As a result of Mia and Gordon's actions, speculation around their children's activities became headline news and the subject of numerous interviews, which Mia struggles to take accountability for. It may be true that Gordon became cruel and abusive as their marriage deteriorated, but as Giselle points out, she failed to protect her kids at all costs. That's a hard pill to swallow for anyone, much less a slightly narcissistic reality star, and Mia predictably does not take kindly to the implication. Ending the episode by running to the bathroom in tears after listing out all the ways her children are thriving, it's a fraught scene and one that sets the pace for the rest of the season. The alliances of the previous season are no more and anyone can get their moment of scrutiny in the weeks to come. All in all, we got a strong debut and a more promising outlook for the rest of the season than we've had in several years. Welcome back to Maryland, everyone. See you next week. So before we do the cherry blossoms, what did we think of Karen's attitude, birthday, lunch, whatever that was supposed to be? I don't like that theme, but it's no. neither here nor there. <laughs> just, yeah. She just has a way. She just has no taste no. in a lot of things. This yeah. attitude party was one of them. I mean, she tried, so we got to give her that. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that Karen so swiftly changed the subject and pointed it at uh, everybody, look at Mia. It was magical. I'm like, how did you do that, Karen? To be honest. But did they lie? I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that's a hard pill to swallow, especially coming from, you know, somebody as shady as Giselle and somebody as wannabe righteous as Karen Huger, which is the irony of it all. But, I mean, they didn't lie. I don't think that, like we mentioned, they're thinking about the kids and how it affects them. And I don't know. I, di- I personally didn't see Mia Gallivant all over the world with ink. I'm honestly turned off by her since last season, that whole thing that we just talked about. Yeah. So I think this is just me uh, running away and being dramatic, to be honest. Um, I mean, she couldn't handle the heat. Like, that, that's really what it is. And and sure, coming from, from Giselle and Karen, it can seem, you know, ill-intentioned. Yeah. But I think it was genuine concern, mm-hmm. you know, because there are mothers and moms know what it is to look after their kids, to take care of their kids, to try and protect their kids. So yeah, they probably, they probably have been wondering for quite a while, like, why didn't you protect your kids? Why didn't you, you know, look out? And, and the thing is, it, it's, it's, I feel like it's very complicated, right? It's a complex situation because at the end of the day, Mia did not come from a home where she was protected. Mm. Mia doesn't understand certain things. I'm not a psychologist, so hopefully she has a therapist of her own. But I think a lot of her behavior stems from her own upbringing, her own, you know, like life, how she was raised. Um, And so in her mind, her kids are doing good in school, so it's good. Her kids are doing well in here, so it's good. Like, that's what she perceives to be as the, I guess, equivalent of everybody's thriving, everybody's doing well. Um, but obviously, there's more that goes into into all of that. Um, so I do think that there was a, a real element of concern coming from Giselle, even Karen. I know that her and Karen have a thing, but like even even Karen, I think, genuinely felt a concern and. Mia is not one to really also take accountability for things. I mean, what housewife is, if we're being honest here, mm-hmm. they're all very much like really good at trying to deflect 
as we saw with Karen once again, that yeah. whole mafia boss skit that she did, that just to me came out of nowhere. Because what what exactly prompted that sort of little monologue that she did? She put on the hat. <laughs> but, but here's That's the thing. It all started. <laughs> you have two new people that are yep. supposedly Karen's friends. And even they looked at her like, what? I think they were very much confused like the rest of us. So it just it just seemed really odd to me. Um I do I think it was also obvious in that moment that like you said earlier Giselle doesn't really have like allies anymore. Um and it was it was strange just seeing her between Karen and Ashley, right? Like she didn't seem to have like her like a shield Robin in a way was kind of like a shield for her. Um, and so she kind of had to really talk to other people. She kind of had to engage. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing I took away from it is she probably has heard the criticisms from everybody. And Bravo has heard the criticisms and said, get it together. My, like, I think overall, my, my thought on the episode was Bravo told these ladies, get it together. (laughs) Or you're you're gone. Yeah, just like Candace, just like NECA, just like Robin. Because Mm -hmm. I think we know that there was never going to be a way to move forward with, in particular, Candace and Robin still being a part of it. Because the the alliances would still be cemented. It would still be... There was no way. Because of the fact that those two women were not flexible in any way. So I think this was very evident that Bravo was about to clean house. All of you get it together or we're doing a Potomac reboot Mm -hmm. because it just, it didn't feel good anymore. And I think the fact that we saw last season when they would bring on someone new, I forget the girl's name, um, Kiara, Kiara, Mm -hmm. people liked her. I think, you know, audiences responded to her well, which is why she's, going to be a part of this season i was surprised she wasn't in this episode but um but i think it was obvious that bravo must have must have really like set these women down and just you know told them y'all need to make it work because the episode did not feel so heavy it didn't feel so toxic so anyway what were your i guess overall thoughts before i go into the cherry blossoms um I'm happy that they introduced the new people on the first mm-hmm. episode. At least we yeah. got a little introduction because NECA's Lord, we got that like what episode four? They did that something girl like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm kind of curious to see like how they all fit in and yeah. to our conversation. <laughs> what when you said off camera guys when you said how they gonna bring a housewife but she's not a housewife no more <laughs> yes uh, yeah you want to elaborate oh jeez. okay so uh this is one of the cherry blossoms it says we are briefly introduced to the newcomers in this episode stacy the newly separated former qvc host vivianne the boutique owner and jazzy the nfl wag More on them next week after the Eileen Davidson Accords have lifted. (laughs) Um, Also, I didn't even realize there was a Jazzy in this picture. I I don't remember her. Um, But discussing Stacey, yeah, I'll elaborate. Um, So at this point, we have Karen Huger, who's having marital issues that she's not really talking about. But there had been hints and rumors for some time that there may be some kind of discord there and still no discussions were had because I recall they played a clip of last season when they asked in a therapy session, um, Karen's husband, are you in love with her? And he didn't exactly say yes. So, you know, that's been going on for a while. Giselle has no husband and I'm not trying to shade her, but, but, but I'm confused. Also not not in the picture. Sharice, I remember. Of that show being called Real Housewives, guys. 
that's what we're going for. Yes, right. Yeah. The show, not in real life. In real life, yeah. whatever you can do what you want. Sharice in the very first season, did she eventually get like a divorce too? Yeah. Was going through a divorce. Yeah. Um, Robin was literally divorced, living with her ex husband, and it took twelve seasons before they got married again. <sighs> then you have Ashley, who ends up divorcing. A few mm. seasons. No. No, no, no. She's still not divorced. I'm sorry. Separating a few seasons ago. Candace was the only one who got married. True. And she became, I guess, a housewife. So there's that. You um, the assignment for the most yeah, part. Right. Monique, she did it all well, you know. And but now she's divorced. Or yes, divorced but it's thing. after the show, so I'm going to cut her some slack. Okay. At least during her season, she was married. Oh, you know, right. Wendy seems to have the most stable relationship, so good for her. Keep it going. She's, girl. But she's never been a housewife. It looks like now she's entering housewife status because she's what, quitting what, her job. What are we talking about? I mean, she's a housewife. I'm saying she's married to someone. Now you're going to like the traditional stay at home housewife. See, and this is why I feel like these shows are just so infuriating because they evoke this very the name itself evokes a very traditional meaning of what it's supposed to be Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but these women are not that at one point monique was um but you know eventually she started to become like an entrepreneur karen huger was Mm -hmm. and kind of sort of still is i mean i know she's got her own little businesses here and there but I mean, for the most part, she is. Um, and and so, like, one of the things that I think I liked in that very first season is Sharice was, like, a socialite. Um, Karen was a socialite. You know, these are things that just kind of seem more on brand to what it is. I think it's amazing that, you know, they venture out, they start businesses, they do, you know, whatever, whatever. That's great. But then you start to shift. And that's where I think, like, certain things should shift with you, which is why it always was frustrating seeing how some of the, the storylines would pan out. Um, the fact that, like, Candace became a housewife, but, you know, we knew Candace had her own endeavors that she was trying to do. I loved when they brought on Wendy and Wendy was, like, I don't know, 35 degrees in and had, like, 12 jobs. I loved that for her. Um, but... But again, that's a different take, I guess, on what like a housewife would be, right? She wasn't in the traditional sense that. Mm-hmm. So it's always been a little bit baffling to me because it's like you guys are, are trying to portray like this life of these women are married to these like, you know, men of money and we're accusing me of only marrying Gordon for his money. We're accusing Ashley of only marrying Michael for his money. And they're doing all these things and they're they're able to have these luxurious lives. That's not realistic. And then when we get to the real stuff, like the fact that, you know, Jamal got a woman pregnant when he was back with Giselle. We don't really discuss that. Ooh. Or the fact that Michael had, I don't know how many allegations against him. And Ashley also still never wanted to believe anything. But never ended up getting any of the money that she wanted to have from her prenup. Or the fact that, like, Karen has been accused multiple times of cheating, but she never, you know, discusses anything. Robin had a season last season where her husband's stuff was being brought up, but she stood ten toes down next to Juan like he never did a thing. He didn't hurt a fly. So anyway, there's a lot of things that I think are very just chaotic, baffling, toxic about this whole housewife series and i'm glad that at least for this first episode it feels like it's a little bit more lighthearted. we're getting back to some of those you know just light situations but yeah when i saw that woman stacy and the initial gossip was oh she's where's her ring oh <laughs> okay yeah. that was a little confusing you know it's a little confusing i know what are the rest of the cherry blossoms so, the other cherry blossoms that we have, Ashley debuting her confessional look, sporting a fresh spray tan and blonde short cut, simply stunning and a strong look to debut with. Yeah, she looked great. Her confessional looks were, were really nice. 
Wendy Estefo being a Swifty was a plot development I did not expect. I need footage of her mispronouncing lyrics at the Eras tour ASAP. <laughs> Pull up in the Sri Lanka has been a fixture in my lexicon of all time housewife moments. Ashley's lawyer expressed that they were hoping to get to mediation and handle the matter by around Labor Day. That was a month ago. Ashley still has it divorced. <laughs> we're starting to veer into Shannon Tatum and Jenna Dewan territory here. Ooh. GNA fashion is now GNA fusion, with the wellness element being added to their collection of leggings and graphic tees. Cha, I guess. And that is how our cherry yeah. blossoms in article end for this week. So, yeah, any final thoughts or any thoughts on the cherry blossoms? No thoughts on the cherry blossoms, but I am finally happy that Potomac is back, refreshed, and mm -hmm. hopefully the drama isn't so heavy like it was in the previous seasons and it's a more enjoyable thing for us because Potomac was a drag to watch and then talk to you guys about it. Oh, last um, season, yeah. we hate talking to you guys. It's just, we were so disappointed with the show. You guys know that we watch the Kardashians because those are our stepsisters. They're rocking our nerves too. So we were we were going through a moment there. So I'm happy we're kind of back on track a little bit. I mean, yeah, same here. It, it was very different from last season. And this did not feel like a drag. This did not feel like, you know, we're having to like fake it till we make it. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm interested to see how the rest of the season's gonna go. And I wonder if any of the freshmen will make it through to become a sophomore. We know NECA didn't, but hey, hopefully <laughs> hopefully these girls can make it. And you know, I I I I hate to sound mean, but I honestly did not even remember she was a part of the season. Me neither. I thought twice about Robin this episode probably zero times about Candace so I think they were definitely the problem and I said I said last season somebody had to go and I mentioned it had to be between Robin Giselle and Candace well you got two out of three <laughs> yeah anyway so you know We'll be back for the next episode. <laughs> Guys, let us know in the comments what you think about season nine, episode one of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Are you excited for the new ladies? What do we think about Karen Huger's reenactment of her situation? Should we hold her accountable? Should she tell us more? Is it our business? What do we think about Giselle not interrogating her? Is this Giselle just trying to? men fences has she changed or she just needs an alliance mm -hmm. what do we think about ashley that is not divorced yet mia and gordon situation what do we think about this paternity thing that's been going on and on and on and we hate it but i mean us we hate it but do you guys hate it too let us know in the comments but that concludes today's episode. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, please share our video. We're trying to grow our community so your friends can be our friends and we can all be friends. We also have social media, which Steele will tell you about. We're on TikTok and Instagram at Hear Me Out DNE. So please like, follow, share, and comment. You can also listen to the uh, videos in podcast format via YouTube Music. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Bye.